Welcome everybody to Monday Night Raw here in Orlando, Florida, the home of the WWE Performance Center and used to be the home of NXT, but now NXT is gone. But I tell you what's not gone, that is Los Nefarios. Okay, so last week we had a little bit of an issue uh, with these men in particular. Uh, we had plenty of issues, it always happens all the time. But these two were scheduled for a two on two match against LWO. The winners would take on the Street Profits next week for the Raw Tag Team titles. Well, it's supposed to be this week. Now it's going to be happening next week, the tag title match, because the winner of this match is going to get that opportunity. But to stop that from happening, the double count out like it did last week from happening again, it has turned into a tornado tag match. But the group for the making of Re William Regal, because we weren't 100 percent sure what was happening. Regal wanted a definitive winner because of this rivalry, so we're getting it here with this uh, tornado tag. The rules of tornado tag, do not forget, uh, count out is gone, tags are gone, but weapons are not allowed. Common misconception, tornado tags. Do not allow weapons. So, all well, the rules and the stipulations out of the way with, and that's the far out here. Let's uh, bring out their opponents. And their opponents at a combined weight of 365 pounds. Joaquin Wild and Cruz Del Toro, the LWO. Makes sense to start this off uh, first. Because, as much as I said a rivalry, it's been a bit dormant for a bit. Because it, we, we kind of reignited it last week. Just to try and find us some tag contenders for the profits. And, well, uh, yeah, it didn't quite go best. The, like I said, Legado attacked them uh, before, before the match. The match started. And they just kept brawling, basically. Because uh, they just started brawling on the outside in the bottom left-hand corner where Joaquin Mard was. Well, over the top the post, I guess. But, you know. So... We need to sort this out. We need to extinguish it while we can. So getting a match instead of a triple threat match. I don't know. Because we've had that before where something like that's happened. And so we've had a triple threat match for uh, the title instead. Regal more specifically wants to handle this beef two on two style. I am in got issue with it because it's a hell of a way to open Monday Night Raw. And it feels rare that we get to open with a match. And I'm all here for it. Jeez, Joaquin Wall really is going wild right there. Jeez. Anyways. Oh. Jeez, add that up to one. Poison Rana Springboard. Jeez, and now on Bo's the one going wild. Jeez. I mean, I expected this one to be a high flying action. Uh, yeah, that, that was English. Because, <laughs> well, you know, a bunch of Lucha Libre bastards here going for the cover. Jeez, oh, I think a Bo nearly tried to chop block on Bruiser Tor there as he was mid drop kick. I think he might have ended up hitting Angel in the process. I don't quite know. But either way, oh jeez, there goes Cruz. But I think Hobo is trying to help out his tag team partner. Not going so well. Now he's dis uh, distracted Joaquin, but it's giving Cruz a chance to get back into the ring. Jeez, taking down Cruz there. Oh, jeez, what that soup kick. And now Hobo off the top. Jeez, Joaquin's gone. Oh, Angel goes flying over to Cruz. Oh, Joaquin sends Humberto down. What's Joaquin got in mind? Sorry, Cruz got back on the advantage after Angel. Joaquin! Wild goes wild! Expect nothing less from that man. Jeez. Splash. The, the, oh, jeez. Cruz with a misstep. Sending Angel into the barricade there. He's there fighting on the outside. But like I said, this is a tornado tag. No count out, so we can't. The match doesn't end like it did last time. Jeez, just dropping Angel on his head on the outside. Oh, her bow looking to send Joaquin's face right into the announce table. Jeez. And I think it's a good job we got this a tornado tag. Let them, these two teams just focus in on each other. And that's right, Rory. I think Cruz just went for a roll up there and realized he couldn't go for a pin out. Or at least looks like the move transitioned into it. Of course, like I said, no weapons are allowed. This is, and, but there's no tags and no count out, but this is not a false count anywhere. 
Oh. It looks like Humberto. Looks like he's down with Joaquin looking to help Angel with Cruz del Toro. But maybe I think he should have kept, made sure that the man was down. Jeez, Joaquin with a Hurricane Runner. But Angel looking to put a finishing touch to Joaquin Wild. Oh, but Cruz is now firing back off Humberto. At that moment, to breathe to recapture, to regain a bit of a. I don't know, consciousness, I guess. A wearable to think, I guess. Oh, jeez. Two men been sent back in the ring. Oh, Joaquin! No, sorry, Humberto. Jeez. Wrong name. I do it all the time with everybody. It happens. Jeez, Joaquin! That just drives his face. It drives the matter. Drives Humberto's face. No, his own face. That'd be a bit weird. Oh, Joe Cone only just noticed it because there's also a bit of a submission going on. Jeez, kick out. Cruz is not dangerous in submission. Oh, but Angel gets it out in time. Jeez, chaos is going on around there. It's wild. I feel like I've used that pun too many times already. It's like, jeez, a bow looking for that cover, but Cruz broke out of it. Broke him out of it. Walking out of it, jeez. I'm getting so bad with losing the, like, I don't know. Like I said, I've just made, like, said Joaquin drove his own face into the mat effectively. For if you if you couldn't see what I was doing, that's what it made it sound like he was doing, you know what I mean? He was like, purposely locked So I've gone way worse than that today for some whatever reason. Anyways. Oh, Cruz, no. Angel gets out of the way. Jeez, drop kick. Joaquin, no. Angel was not surprised there. Backstabber, shout out Carlito. Angel going to cover after that backstabber. Oh, jeez, Joaquin, he's kicked out. I don't know. Cruz looking to double team on Angel here. What's this? Oh, Joaquin looking to put uh, to keep on Bertie at bay. So, Cruz. Can you go to the cover after that fisherman buster? One. Oh, rope break there. Rope breaks that allowed. Forgot to mention that one. And it's a bit of a weird one with tornado tags. What's allowed and what's not. It's kind of like a halfway in between, uh, say, a two on two and a norm and a no holds barred two on two. It's kind of a halfway point. No weapons allowed. But rope breaks are still in. But no count outs happening and no tags. A little bit of a mix. Jeez, drop kick right to Cruz's face. Jeez. It's half and half that, I guess, isn't it? Anyways. Uh, oh, Angel. Oh, boy, he's looking for somebody. Oh, Angel. Goes flying over to Cruz. Humberto does it. Also lands right on top of Cruz. Cruz just been one bow combo there. Just two. It hits him one. And now Angel looking to do the damage to Joaquin. Well, Humberto now. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. I'm about to get out of there. Oh, Angel kicks. Joaquin on the inside there. I'm about to back into the ring. Oh, looking to clip Joaquin's wings. But Cruz putting a stop to that. But putting in a detriment of putting right arms right over to. Maybe not for long. Drop kicks in the knee. He's Angel. Stroking away. Oh, looking for a... Go oh, right to the face. Covering Cruz. One, two. Jeez, Cruz just about fires that shoulder up. It's what a way to start off all this has been. Oh, moves on springboard. And Bo. Putting Joaquin into the corner. What's this? Oh, and Bo here. Jeez. Oh, boof. Oh, Cruz. Oh, Angels. I don't know. Angels stopping Cruz. Oh, Legado da Fantasma slash Lost Forest with the win. Too much damage to Joaquin Wild and Cruz Al Toro just about not being able to make the save. Oof, but that's given Lost the Forest. A win here, and you know what winning this match means. It means they get a title match against the Prophets next week. Anyways, still, well, to come tonight, we have Pete Dunn versus Bronson Reed after Reed attacked Pete Dunn last week as he was about to go talk to Paul. But it's having the main event, world champion finally goes to deal with Braun Strowman for the second time. And we also have a promo from Xavier Woods, which is now. So. Let's bring the final member of the New Day still standing out here. And we were just talking about the Raw Tag Team Champs. This man knocked off 
one half of the World Tag Team Champions last week after accusing him of being the uh, being involved with attacking the New Day. Because it made sense, they are the Tag Team Champions. They've not won if the New Day is the top the team to beat technically, and they're not even the champions. The champions are going to feel threatened by them, so they might want to put an extinguish them to them. But Montez says it's not. He wanted a handshake after the match. Woods did not accept. Told him to get out of his ring. So clearly Woods isn't in the best of the mood, but he's trying to put up a brave face for the WWE Universe. But when he's looking at anybody that might be the culprit, uh, that, uh, that, that smile does turn the other way. That is for sure. It flips upside down. But yeah, we know he's been looking for who it is. He's been asking backstage. Maybe this might be a, 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 the next step of pursuit for us. Or maybe he's found out and we just don't know yet. Who knows? Let's find out, shall we? I've asked loads of people backstage, everybody giving me the same answer. They didn't do it. They don't know. Well, I'm saying it right here to this camera in front of all of you. Whoever did it, I am coming for you. So just show yourself. Be a man. Be men. However many there are of you. Come face me. Come fight me. I'll be waiting. Fighting words from Xavier Woods. Anyway, still to come tonight, we have the main event. The world champion is in action here tonight. And we, up next, we have Dunn versus Bronson Reed one on one. After Bronson Reed attacked uh, Pete Dunn, after Pete Dunn went to go talk to Logan Paul after him attacking him the week prior. Obviously, like I said, didn't get to happen. Then Bronson Reed and Logan Paul attacked Pete Dunn. But it was Bronson Reed that started that fight. So now we're getting on here tonight. The reason why Pete Dunne went to go talk to Paul is because that title over his shoulder. Paul is using his title match shot to take on Pete Dunne for the Intercontinental title after Logan Paul beat Omos. Uh, and we was a question what would he use his title match for. He ended up uh, finding out a way to be able to make it his Intercontinental title instead of the United States title, which is a little bit of a fairer fight than it is against Dillia. And the point is Pete Dunne lost his match to Survivor Series, so that proves that as well. But uh, still, that's an easy task that I'm sure Bronson Reed is soon going to learn out that it is hard to be put down the bruise weight, but more importantly, how much pain that he can deal out on you and your entire body and your ligaments and all that. I mean, I'm pretty sure Logan Paul was supposed to be out here with Bronson Reed. But clearly he decided not to show up. Curious. Uh, I kind of expected Logan Paul to be out here. Bill to be out here as, as, as Bronson Reed's manager. But I don't know. Uh, I guess... I guess not. I guess we're just getting regular one-on-one. -on -one. I guess that's a good thing actually I shouldn't be complaining. There should be a fair fight then between Bronson Reed and Pete Dunne. As uh, we can get ready for this huge, huge match, as I'm sure is going to be a great one, that is for sure. Oh, I was about to say, let's get it underway. Looks like the man wants to make his own entrance. Here he is. Ah. I, should, I should have known. Uh, this man, too, just inflated in his own ego, I guess, is the best way of putting it. And just locking eyes with Pete Dunne, the IC champion. And looks like he's come to sit down at ringside. See, someone's even got him a chair. Jeez. I mean, I mean, I'm surprised it's not some, like, 1980s luxury. 1980s, you know what I mean. I meant some, like, vintage, like, fancy, luxurious stuff. Maybe maybe one that's actually from, from like, the 2050s that, like, they got time travel to get to. You know what I mean? He's that rich, he's that egotistical that he feels like he deserves that kind of thing, but either way. These two men just circling around the ring now. Just keeping backs turned to each other. It's an interesting show of disrespect to both to both, I guess. And it's oh launching straight out of the gate and geez. 
The Bronto read the chop, just took him down, done nothing. Uh, there was an interesting start to this match, that's for sure. I don't think I've seen that before. At least not that since I've been commentating, but Bronson Reed looking to take down to Dunn. He's, maybe I mentioned Bronson Reed's going to find out what it's like being in the ring with Pete Dunn and how painful it is. I feel like I forgot to mention how painful it's going to be in the ring to be in with Bronson Reed. The last time we saw this man, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, going in for the cover. One kick out by Dunn. Was against one Drew McIntyre. And I believe a punishment for Drew McIntyre, just like we got Braun Strowman took on Braun Breaker for a punishment about a month and a half ago ish. And uh, yeah, we're getting a rematch for that tonight because Braun still got issues with uh, Wolf Dogs and Braun Breaker in specific. Oh, geez. Braun Strowman flicks it back over and the way down on Butch now. Ooh, shouldn't have called him that. Please don't hurt me, Pete. Oh, maybe Braun Strowman might be before taking his attention away from me for the time being, at least. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so you know, it was interesting for that to be happening. So Bronson Reed's last match was a punishment match for Drew McIntyre when he threw Cameron Grimes off the stage and into a light, if I'm not mistaken, was his pun was the reason why he got the punishment. I, I think that's probably the biggest thing we've ever had, like the most craziest thing we've ever had. We haven't seen Cameron Grimes since. But, yeah, and uh, Drew eventually put away Bronson Reed, but it was a fight for Drew McIntyre, that is for sure. Just like I'm expecting it to be a fight for Pete Dunn as it's proving to be the Death Valley driver to Dunn. Going yet yeah, again into the cover. One. Kick out from Dunn still. Jeez. What a shot from Bronson there. That stomp looked painful to Dunn. Looks fine for, for Bronson. <laughs> it's all done. Kick it off Bronson there. He's off. Bronson. Oh, what a shoulder bar just taking back down Dunn. I say Dunn's not in the best of shape at the minute. We've seen it. After that match with Dragunov. One. Two. Kick out from Dunn. Jeez, not much. Uh, Dunn's looking he's grasping from air for that point. Like I said, that match with Dragunov's just completely done. Pete Dunn in. That's what happens when you take on Dragunov. And then still wrestling moat like. Dunn's wrestle. This is what, the fourth week since Survivor Series? This is Pete Dunn's third match since Survivor Series. And the only time he didn't wrestle in a match was last week where he got attacked by Bronson Reed and Logan Paul. Point is, this man has not had a break since Ilya Dragunov. That is proving that Dunn is not in the best of shape. And is why Logan Paul is choosing now, I guess. Which isn't long after Survivor Series, to be fair. But noticing how worn down Pete Dunn is, and he was the one that lost to, to Ilya. It wasn't the wise. Maybe if Ilya had lost, he would have gone for Ilya, maybe. But because Pete Dunn lost, and now he's also recruited Bronson Reed to just put in the damage model. Just seeming like there's some kind of an alliance, maybe. I don't quite know what for, but. Geez, old Dunn, no. Bronson. What's this? Geez, oh no, Dunn. Rolls down. Covers. One. No. Bronson flips it back over. One. Two. Kick out there. Jeez. Wants another elbow, no, Dunn gets out of the way. See what I'm saying? My point is, Dunn's not in the best of shape. And Logan Paul is capitalising on it. And one step further in capitalising it, he's using Bronson Reed to his advantage. There's beat Dunn. Oh, jeez, Dunn's messed up. Oh, you know, but he's fine back at least. Maybe not for long, though. It's Bronson Reed. Jeez, the Bulldog Ryan to the floor of full force. Jeez, jumping as well to use gravity as his own weapon. Because Big Bronson Reed is no small man. I feel like he's, the, he's not as... The, he's Bronson Reed's a big guy, but he's not... Jeez, oh! Tsunami! Tuppy done, is that it? One. Two. Oh, beat done. Barely getting the shoulder up there. Jeez. I was going to say... Bronson Reed, deceptively, is, isn't actually as tall as you think he is. He's only 6'1". But he makes up for it in mass, the mass in other ways, and the strength in other ways, and the toughness in other ways, and the scariness in other ways, and the destruction in other ways, as he's proven right now, as he's having his way with Pete Dunn. Maybe not for long though. Oh no, Bronson gets a shot in first, and Dunn gets a shot back, but it hasn't brought Bronson Reed anywhere nearly enough as Pete Dunn would need. Jeez, Dunn's not doing great here. That's for sure. Jeez, Dunn, no Bronson Reed yet again. Done, no. 
I don't want to chop down. Love him. He done after that one. Two. He done yet again, kicking out to two. This ma this is not looking good for P done here. None at all. One's already just looking at the referee like, just count to three next time. Oh, Dunn gets the knees up on the senton. And Dunn looking to hit the crash. Landon to Bronson Reed. Kind of out of nowhere a little bit. Of one, two, Reed kicks out there. Jeez. That's poof. Uh, that was poof. I was kind of just going poof kind of thing, but that was poof. I don't know where. And Dunn with a senton of his own there to Bronson Reed. He's a bit of elevation to match Bronson Reed's like uh, uh, level of doing it. But Pete done now. Oh, I think he's looking to go to work on Bronson Reed. The crash landing may be given. Pete done the opening to do the damage that no one else can, like the one and only bruiser weight Pete Dunn. He didn't get that nickname by choice, ladies and gentlemen. He got that because it's what he does. Is Pete Dunn now going to work on Bronson Reed here? Looking to just manipulate the joints, the tendons, the ligaments of big Bronson Reed. Gets the knees to the back now. I'm sure Logan Paul is watching on. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't see him early when they went outside to the right, so clearly he scurried off. But uh, I don't blame him, to be honest. Anyways, Dunn with the bitter end to Bronson Reed. Going in for the cover one. Two. Wow. Bronson fires the shoulder up. Jeez. Oof. What a match this has been. Oh, done. I can tell. Snap those fingers. Jeez. Sending Bronson into the corner. Jeez. What a smash to the turnbuckle. And now done with a tornado DDT to Bronson. Oh, Bronson's bleeding now. And Dunn's noticed it. Like a shark to the water. Like a shark in the water, sorry. Dunn is looking. Jeez, that's gushing already. Jeez. And Dunn now smashing Bronson's face off that turnbuckle. Jeez, looking to go to work. Jeez, 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 jeez. Brie Dunn is bringing out that bruise away side of him. Maybe, just maybe, Dunn has hope in this match. He's hit one better end. I feel like a set of second one truly would be a better end for Bronson Reed here. And bit P Dunn looking to maybe get that advantage. Joel Dunn on oh, Dunn. Jeez. Getting the slaps going. Just on Bronson Reed taking down Reed. Looked like maybe he had a moment of issue there. But I think even Bronson Reed is slowing down at this point. He's never been in the ring with someone like Pete Dunn before. And it's proven why Pete Dunn. Is it to go there to the champion? Because no, even though he's been beaten and battered these past few weeks, sure he lost to Ilya, the United States champion, but he's had two matches in between this and that, and he's won both. Sure, maybe things look dire at some points, but Dunn is the Intercontinental Champion for a reason. He beat Sheamus in an ambulance match for a reason. It's because he is the bruiser weight as he's smashing Bronson Reed's face off the apron. Just looking to do the damage to that head. Uh, he, he's just noticed they're bleeding. And he's going all for it. It's like I said, a shark in the water. To blood. Bronson Reed though gets that shoulder back down. Clearly, he done not able to capitalize for long enough. As Bronson Reed now looking to manhandle P done yet again. Oh, Dunn's back. Jeez, Bronson Reed a little in shock there. And now these two looking to counter each other a little bit. And now Reed getting these heavy shots. But Dunn, he's still fighting. He is still fighting. He is still showing why he is the Bruce Wayne Ways, our Intercontinental Champion. Jeez. Oh, Dunn, still fighting. He wants more. And Bronson Reed's going to give it to him. Jeez. Dunn. 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 Oh, it's nice to like a pulls back. And Dunn now, he's looking to build. Oh, what's he doing in here? Jeez. Ronan the bloody match. Jeez. The rest had to throw it out. Disqualification. Pete Dunn with the win, but. Reed's just down after that. I mean, Dunn's down after that clothesline, sorry. It proves uh, what happened there. Dunn with the win, disqualification, win, not what he wanted, but still to come, the main event. Roxanne, why is the fight slowed back up between you and Ronda? You were fine for months, and all of a sudden, it's gone back to 100 again, like it was all those months ago. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. It's just She attacks me first, and I just defended myself. Admittedly, things got out of hands, but I had to prove to Ronda 
that she just can't mess with me like that. I'm dangerous. I'm a capable fighter. And she shouldn't have just thought that the last time was a fluke. I am Roxanne Perez, the prodigy. I should get more respect off her. I know how great you are, Roxanne. And I'm sure Ronda know, knows it too, deep down. But throwing her off that thing, not good for my side of things. But also, that's not going to help Ronda's temper, which is bad news for the both of us. So, word of advice, be careful. All right, I said it was stupid last week. It's risen to a whole new level of stupid this week. I'm being ignored so much that the referee ignored my hand on the rope. Completely blatantly saw it, yet ignored it. What is going on back here? Make this make sense. I just had to sneak past Regal to get out here while he was doing with Roxanne because he wouldn't listen to me either. This is complete and utter nonsense. Is anybody getting deja vu? I'm pretty sure I said that last time I'm getting deja vu to saying anybody got deja vu. It is Wes Lee coming out here yet again. Uh, it's 1-1 it's one, one between him and The Miz. Uh, first, uh, been plenty of shenanigans. First time round, Miz won after hitting a low blow while the referee got taken down after a top rope Hurricane Rana. And then last week, Wesley uh, got the win even though the ref uh, at least didn't count the rope break from Miz. I mean, let's face it. I said that, that I don't like you. I said a lot of people don't like you. The referee's probably just another man included, let's face it. But what should that matter though? They're supposed to be non-biased. They're supposed to call it down the middle, no matter how much they like one to the other. Look, Miz, it's weird. I agree with you in a weird case. It's weird, I know. But hear me out. Let's settle this right now. We can find out who really is the better man. Prove it to Regal, prove it to us, prove it to the WWE Universe. Me versus you, no holds barred match, so there's no argument about low blows or rope breaks. I can't believe what this has come to to get any level of respect these days. I've got to go find nobody in a no disqualification match. Fine, if I must. Well, okay then. We had a Tornado Tag match earlier tonight. We had the World Champion in action. We had the Intercontinental Champion in action. And we're getting a no holds barred match. What a roar this is. Jeez, anyway, starting this match off. And Miz surprisingly rolled out of the way. Oh, jeez, Wesley lands hard there. Jeez, and the Miz just showing off there. Maybe he shouldn't be doing it. Oh, giving him just enough opportunity. Just sending Wesley right into the stairs. And Miz is showing the absolute disrespect. Calling Wesley and nobody still, even though Wesley's beaten Miz. And he's seen what Wesley can do because Wesley should have won the first match as well. And I felt like he would have won the second match if it wasn't for Miz being close to the ropes. And Miz, unsurprisingly, going for weapons first. Already you run to the outside, already chucked Wesley into the stairs. Unsurprising that Miz is going to take full advantage of the no holds bar stipulation. But one could argue that is exactly what you have to do in these kind of matches. You've been given the match for a reason. Use it. Oh, Miz has just had first gone into the ladder there. Oh, it's there, sorry, but Chez. Jeez. First time the charm. Anyways. Pete Dunn. I mean, Pete Dunn, what? Miz. Backbreaker. Neckbreaker combo, jeez. Miz. Jeez with the chair. I look for, again, oh, hold on, we're getting word. Hold on. Oh, I don't know. It looks like, uh... He was asking for a fight, I was asking for someone to come find him. I guess that's happened. Not that he deserves it, but he kind of was asking for it a little bit. Not, not getting beaten down, but justice. But that's what he's ended up getting. That's poor Woods. Hopefully can someone could go attend to medical instead of just having a shot of him like that. You know, maybe they're rushing over now and now they see this. Now we're seeing this at the same time. It is live, I guess. Anyways, Miz Wesley back in the ring now. Jeez. It's just showing even more disrespect to Wesley. Jeez. Body. Slam. Going for the cover on Wesley. One. Two. Jeez, Wesley barely gets a shot up there. Oof. Three of those chair shots have done some damage. As Miz gets the drop kick to the face of Wesley. Going in for the cover, clearly. Miz getting desperate here. Jeez, but Wesley still kicking up, kicking out. But Wes has had some nasty bombs. We, like, uh, so we didn't even get to see the chair shots. We don't know what happened. Jeez, that's into the exposed turnbuckle. Jeez, goes into the cover. One, two. I didn't even know he did that. He, when he smashed his face into the turnbuckle, must have been exposed. Jeez, no wonder Wesley went down for a while. He's also he landed quite hard. 
This was like David's first move, basically. The first bit of damage done in the match was Wesley to himself, effectively. Oh, Wesley back into that turnbuckle. On Miz, looking to use his momentum for the sunset flip. On oh, Wesley, one, two. Oh, not even a two count there. I thought it was about to be. On oh, Miz, just looking to go to a work. On oh, Wesley, jeez. That's all. Miz barely got a connection there, but he got enough. Close line to Wes. No, West the boots the face. Oh, jeez. Gets that beautiful of a maneuver on Miz. Goes into the cover. One kick out there by Miz, though. Not much damage into Miz so far in this match. Wesley looking to change that with that combination. Just rocks Miz. Oh, West pulls up short. And Miz is going to capitalize. Jeez, West, no. Oh, shot. No, wet. Oh, jeez, Miz. Straight. Was, he's kind of been aiming. Gone for some strike strikes. It's taken him a little bit of time, but it's. It was working originally, but not that time. Wesley, now they're sent off the middle rope there. Was that middle rope? Was it bottom rope? I don't even remember. Springboard either way. Jeez. It was just going full dead weight. It does its damage, people. Oh, what a shot to Miz's face. That does damage too. And I think this is going to do damage to the Meteora. Right to Miz. Jeez. But Wes and done, obviously. There's a lot more still to put through. Miz. Jeez, the drop kicks to the chest. But Wesley feeling the effects of the match so far. He's Wes. I was about to say, maybe he's not done. Oh, super kick. He's not definitely done. Look, like he's not done with Springboard as well. I remember that. One, two, kick out by Miz. Jeez. Oh, countered by Miz. No, countered by Wes. He's done, oh, Wes. And again, no, Miz counters that one. Oh, and a low blow right to Wesley. Jeez. Oof. Miz. Now looking for the score pressure for tonight. Just the same way Miz won the first match between these two. One, two. Oh, Wesley gets the shoulder up. Oh, Miz is going to be pissed from that one. What, got, what had Wesley done in the first match? Has not had him done in the third one. Miz of Oz now by the Miz. Jeez, going into the cover. One, two. Dar oh, Wesley still kicks out. Of course, Miz went for that low blow. Like I said, no holds barred. Oof, which counts out both their issues. Miz had a one by a low blow. Wesley won by a rope break, not being nerfed. Neither can, uh, can count cause situations this match because road breaks are not allowed kick out two there and low blows are perfectly legal so it sells both their issues and it's the grudge match and the winner of this one goes to face Pete Dunne next week with geez that back into the exposed time over there we've seen how damaged Pete Dunne is in a minute you could really be seeing the winner of this match as the new intercontinental champion going to take on Logan Paul with the cardiac kick with the cardiac kick there could it be Wesley two Oh, Miz fires the shoulder up there, jeez. And Wesley, the cold school splash. Jeez, we had some amazing kick out uh, tonight. Double foot stomp to Miz. Double axe handle. West, West just looking to put the pressure on Miz now. It really could be the next big move. Could be the winning one. Wesley with a suicide dive gets it this time. Jeez, the elbow drop now to Miz. Wesley posed for the crowd. He's getting them all behind him. Wes and a Miz in, back into the ring. Jeez, oh Wes, oh jeez, that sent our right to the lower back of Miz. Miz is going to be feeling that one for a bit. He kind of saw the way he bent back up. He was like, yeah, that hurts. Jeez, Wes and a Miz into that turnbuckle, not the exposed one. Because Wesley a bit more respectable than the Miz. He's it's a shame we haven't seen. Well, I was gonna say it's not a shame. I don't want to see too much damage we've done to the the opponents. Jeez, maybe to the Miz I would like it just like there, but jeez. What a huge move. And Wesley looking to follow it up. To Miz. Front flip DDT to Miz there, jeez. Going into the cover. One, two. Oh, Miz just about gets the shoulder up, jeez. They say we didn't really get to see the chair shots, but we have seen time spent outside without countouts. We have seen low blows 
we have seen use, use of an exposed turnbuckle, so we have been bending the rules a bit, but not as much as I expected. And not as much as I hoped for against the Miz. But jeez. Wesley now. Guess that needs the face. Jeez, we did, like I said, we missed some of the chair shots because of seeing David Woods down and out. But Wesley, oh jeez, the Meteora gets dodged by Miz. Jeez, Miz the combo now. Oh jeez, jeez. Taking down Wes. Miz just not mocking his opponent yet again. Not quite knocking him out yet. Uh, Bink, that's not going to help things for Wesley though, jeez. That snowman driver is always brutal every brutal. It sounded like I said brutal whenever. I was going to sound like I said beautiful then. It's brutal any time I see it. I was going to say any not whenever. Brutal any. Kind of sounds like beautiful. I say it weirdly enough and quickly enough, which knowing me is possible. Anyways, Miz getting his shot on Wesley. Jeez, the boot to the face. Who's going to get on top of this one? I said the next huge move is going to get the win. Miz was still able to get that front flip DT as a decent move. Okay, not quite the cardiac kick. Jeez, Wesley bringing down Miz again. You can see the way Miz just threw the arm up. He is nearly done for. Could the frog for splash do it? Is Wesley going to go for the cover? Maybe not. Maybe he's not feeling confident enough. Clearly not, because he's now heading to the top row, looking to take it one step further. The frog splash off the top. Jeez. One from the middle, one from the top. Does he want to do for one from the bottom? No. Gets that slingshot. Gets that to the stomach this time. Clearly, Wesley's just trying to fire up everything on Miz that he's got. Jeez, just showing off his arsenal, I guess. I don't know. Miz, he's just trying to make it close to the corner. But Wesley, I think Wes might have this one in the bag, people. It's looking a bit dire for Miz here. And Wesley, just getting move after moving on Miz. Which is one thing at the start of the match, but after the match, these two have been through. It says much about Miz. Not being able to get much more in this. Jeez. Wesley. Oh, Miz. He's breaking out of it. He's breaking out of it. He's, oh, Miz. He's asking for mercy on Wesley. Wesley, he's frozen there. Oh, jeez, he shouldn't have done that. Skull crushing for an early. Miz takes advantage. He's going to win such a cheap underhanded way. But it's not a disqualification or anything like that. That can be done in a normal match. Miz with the win here tonight. Jeez. I was hoping for some kind of nice ending to this match. No rope break uh, being unseen. No low blows being done behind refs' backs or whatever. But still, Miz found a way to be bad. Uh, I guess it is the Miz. I guess it's what we should come to expect from him. It's the way he is. Just gives us his cheap underhanded matches. But anyways, he's got to be happy with himself because he has walked away with a pretty sweet winner's purse, including a beautiful reward. Oh, hold on a minute. What's Miz walking back for? Hold on a minute. He's got a steel chair. She's always gone to fade to black. What's going on here? This is what's happening with Karen Gloss. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. That, 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 some guy. Howdy. Jeez. Sister Rabagail to Miz. Jeez. It looks like Uncle Howdy is just set his sights on the Miz. But the Miz is set his sights on the Intercontinental title. Pete Dunn. The oh, champion Pete Dunn. Jeez, anyways. Main event time. Breaker. Strowman. Well, let's get it on, shall we? Jeez, I wasn't expecting Uncle Howdy to show up behind the Miz. I don't know, maybe he's... Can't say Wesley, maybe he's just had enough of Miz. Like us all, like Wesley. But either way, we know that Miz has got a shot against Pete Dunne next week. Two-time action next week. Oof. I say, speaking of tile matches, we'll see him in the back there. And just as soon as he comes off screen, of course, this pops up as soon as Mello goes off screen. He's got a no hot spot. Well, there a championship match against Bron Breaker. Oh, and surprise, surprise, Mello jumped straight back on screen as soon as it finished. Looks like he has agreement with uh, uh, the people backstage, but he's not back on here anymore. I don't know. First chance he got to not be off, that he was off screen, I guess. I don't know. Either way, Stroman is out here to take on. The world heavyweight champion. Not in a title match though. 
Like I said, two time matches next week. Intercontin Intercontinental and Raw Tag. Um, Los Faris versus the Prophets and uh, Miz versus P Dunn. So, going to be a good show next Raw. Let's not forget, though, about the ending of this show, because this show ain't over yet. It's going to be a very meaty match here. Right now, it's going to be a hard-hitting affair, that is for sure. Some brute strength on show. The World Heavyweight Champion going to prove why he's the World Heavyweight Champion. The last two of these two faced was for that title. Now it's a non-title match. But uh, it doesn't mean Braun Breaker going to take this match lightly. But now he, he knows he can beat Braun Strowman. Will he be able to do it again tonight? If like, Braun Strowman wins this match, he's got a good argument to get that World Title Show maybe added to that match at Royal Rumble. But uh, that's, a, that's what Bridge will talk about. If we cross the G's, but break of the job blocks at Braun Strowman. G's. So we have seen Braun versus Barrett. Oh! Braun Breaker already brings down Braun Strowman. I told you the strength of that man. Jeez, he's on fire. Maybe he shouldn't be feeling so but yeah, It's deservedly so. He gets pumped up from that, but it may have not helped him out there too much. With Braun Strowman, and he's going to prove out why there, jeez. Yeah, we have seen Braun Strowman. Oh, he's about to hit a reverse. Chokes up straight up Braun Breaker. Jeez, bringing out that heavy moves early. Jeez. To Baron Corbin as a test. Braun took on Baron Corbin for a lesson. Loyalty test from Bron from Bron Breaker. Jeez, the strength test from Bron Breaker. Jeez, one. Uh, you could also argue that was a test to see if Bron Breaker could fly. Uh, test concludes. He cannot. He just falls. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, loyalty test did not work out so well for Baron Corbin. Though he still seems to be on the same side. And then they did a tag match against uh, Braun Strowman and Trick Williams. Uh, they're yeah, getting unsuccessful. It's now time for Bron Breaker to get his hands dirty himself and deal with everything himself now. He's seen that Baron Corbin is loyal to him. Now Bron Breaker can do about doing what Baron, sorry, Bron Breaker can do what he does best, and that's put out the damage to his opponents like he's looking to do right here to Braun Strowman. Already doing a better job than Braun. Baron Corbin was. Pretty sure he's nearly lasted like half the time Baron Corbin has already, if not more. He's all. Braun Strowman, who's no Braun, no Braun, grabbing Braun, no Braun, fine out of it. Jeez, what's Braun looking for here? Braun, sorry. Oh, shot to Braun. Jeez, what a chop. I think these two men just looking to chop the hell out of each other's chest. Jeez, oh no, Braun counts that one. Jeez. No Braun counts that. Chop to Braun. Sorry, geez, these two men trade and blows. We saw it from Pete Dunn and Bronson Reed. And that was a heavy few shots, a few damaging shots, just the case here, if not more so. Geez. And Bron, he's trying to take Bron now. Maybe the. Well, I was going to say the first, like, batch of adrenaline that was going, maybe depleted, but he's found that second win now. Geez. But sometimes you just get that, that first win that just pops out of the start of the match, you just don't get for the rest of the match. Felt like maybe Bronson Reed had that. Sorry, Braun Breaker had that. Braun, jeez! Taking down Braun Strowman on the outside. I think Braun might even land on the kendo stick. Maybe. He felt like maybe somebody did. Obviously, the one that Baron Corbin brought in earlier that was not used. Didn't even really distract the ref very well for either man to capitalize in, though he wouldn't have really wanted Braun to capitalize in on it. Was Braun looking to do some damage to the outside? Smash Braun Strowman's face on the hardest part of the ring, being that apron, uh, the top of the apron, connecting the ring. Jeez. Anyways, Breaker bringing back that. Actually, no, it's even harder on the bottom side here, but there's also the LED. Combination of those two things, uh, the apron and the LED, top of those both, that's going to hurt the most. Jeez, Braun Breaker, that's going to hurt to a spear to Braun Strowman. One, two, three. The whole board just about gets the shoulder up, but he did it with some emphasis. He's there is Braun Strowman. He has got some strength behind him. Jeez, Braun Breaker doing the damage to Braun Strowman here. And again, just pounding away 
on Braun Strowman. He's now just going for the kicks, maybe. No. Braun. Jeez. Oh, Braun go to the minute and it works. It's weird for Braun to go to the minute. Someone like that. Jeremy Braun will be the one charging his straight after him. And maybe Braun's maturing. I don't know. Maybe he had a plan. I have no idea. Either way, it hasn't worked out from well from too well. It worked out temporarily. Oh, but Baron Corbin doing his pass on the outside. Giving Braun Breaker their chance to get back into this match. Jeez, Braun's just full collapse into the corner. Using it to help him up, I guess. Jeez. Braun Breaker. No, Braun. Counters that kicks in the midsection. Dropkick just sending Braun Breaker a mile there. Jeez. Knee to the back. Now, yeah, again. Braun Strowman with another reverse choke slam to Braun Breaker. Jeez. Go to the coach. Shake a whole straight Braun Baron Corbin. He looks away. He doesn't want to see that. Yeah, he told everybody Braun Breaker was going to kick out. And he did. Jeez. Braun Strowman should not be flipping like that. And a sent on to Braun. Jeez. This is the damage and again to Braun. Jeez. Look, taking the page out. Braun to Reed's book. Jeez, with the sent ons. And now Braun Strowman. Putting down Braun Breaker. Jeez. And that's the cover of doing his training for the chicken come. I don't know. One, two. Braun kicks out. Sorry, that's go. Braun Breaker uses the corner to climb back up. My lips are just a bit dry, but anyways. Braun's definitely not lacking in strength like my lips are lacking in hydration. Just tossing Braun Breaker across the ring. And now a power slam to Braun Breaker. Covers one, two, kick out. The match stays alive and I don't get to rehydrate for a bit longer. Jeez. Anyways, oh no. This is no laughing matter now. Braun Strowman looking to jump. Off the top, right referee here in the fucking way. He splashed a Bron Breaker. One, two, kick out. Somebody fired John Cone for getting in the right way of that. Uh, just incredible fear thing that just shouldn't have happened. Maybe we can get a little bit of a redo. Fuck you, John Cone. You're still partially in the way, you asshole. Partially in the way for a partially re redone move. Jeez. Ron Strowman, now just doing to work on Bron Breaker there, jeez. Oh, Bron Breaker, the shot at Bar just taking down Braun Strowman. Don't forget, Bron Breaker uh, was a former football college athlete of some kind of description. I don't quite fully know, remember all of it. I think he was, and then he went into uh, American football for a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, Breaker, another shot at Bar to Braun Strowman. Sure enough, where he is, what a champion. Jeez. Close lines, Braun down. I think there was questions at one point if Braun really deserved the World Championship. Just taking it straight to the trick. He went for Melo, but Melo sidestepped. Jeez. I only questioned because of him winning the money in the bank and cashing in on Cody Rhodes after his hellacious triple threat match at SummerSlam between, including Randy Orton and Ted DiBiase Jr. But I think. Ever since that, he has proven why he is World Heavyweight Champion and why he deserves it and why he's earned it and why he can hold it for a long time because, geez, he's been doing some impressive things, impressive defences. And the way that this match is going now is yet again prove that he decided to fight Trick Melogang for a little bit and he's still in control of Braun Strowman at this point. I think it's proving who the, ma the victor is looking like to be in this match. That body slam by Braun Breaker. Not a lot of people can do that to Braun Strowman. Braun Breaker, one of the people on that list. Jeez, bounce there. Braun Strowman's off face off. That turnbuckle and it's busted him open. Jeez, just busted open the monster of all monsters. Jeez. Like I said, he's proven why he's what he showed me. He's proven why he deserves it. Why it wasn't a fluke. Why it wasn't just because of the money in the bank. He just happened to go that way. Now just showing Braun Strowman to check Mana Gang. Showing this is what you tried to throw at me. And this is what I've done to him. And Braun now. Okay, they just bounce Braun Strowman's face off that turnbuckle again, right in front of Trick Melagang. Just looking to worsen the cut on Braun Strowman's face. Look at that proof that Braun Breaker has a dog in him. Braun Strowman may be the monster, but Braun Breaker is the dog. Jeez. They're sending it again into the corner. Oh, what's this from Braun? Oh, jeez! Taking down Braun, I'll just stand in a hole right in matter there saying. I'm gonna, I can do that, but Mello would take a no interest, but Trick, seemingly, is just trying to give Braun Strowman a chance to recover. 
But I don't know if Braun's, Braun's going to be able to. Oh, he's stirring. There he is. He is stirring. Jeez. And it's giving Braun an opening. Jeez. Getting these heavy shots on Braun Breaker. A Braun Breaker the head, but back. And a spear to Braun Strowman. Jeez. Braun Breaker. Oh, he's like to send a message with another spear to Braun Strowman. Mellow. He is, jeez, Braun just, I think he's just letting Mello have a look at the carcass of Braun Strowman for a minute there. Still doing so now, going into the cover right in front of Mello there. One, two, three. Braun, Braun Breaker gets the win over Braun Strowman. It's a nice, with an emphatic way to do so, if I don't say so myself, jeez. A lot of pressure was out to Braun Strowman in the end there. Braun Breaker. Definitely sent a message to Trick Mellow Gang and Mellow in specific. Here is your winner, Braun Breaker! Fair play to Braun. He earned that win. Show him why he is World Away Champion. Show him why it's going to be difficult for Mellow to try and topple Braun Breaker as, uh, if, well, as they face off at Royal Rumble in their no holds barred match. But geez. Anyways, thanks for watching, Raw. Oh, hold on a minute, man, just super kick Braun Strowman. Clearly not happy with what Braun Strowman is doing. Now looking to just bounce his face off the announce table, descending tricks to do it at least. Jeez, I don't think Trick Mellow Gang is happy with Braun Strowman's results of this match. And don't forget he's done enough damage to Braun Breaker. Jeez, I'll now look to do what they did to... Well, probably will do what uh, they did to Braun Breaker a few weeks ago. Now they're planning to do it to Braun Strowman. As Mellow... Through the table, jeez. Oh, oof. can't believe that. Anyways, see you for SmackDown.